Hey everyone, this is Brady, the Game Dev Artisan. In this video, we'll be continuing our series on the Godot fundamentals and how Godot uses its core concept of scene composition using nodes in the scene tree. With scenes at the core of Godot, you can break your game into smaller, more reusable components. And these components can then be used as building blocks for your game. This is at the heart of object-oriented programming. And once you have your mind wrapped around how that works, the sky is really the limit. And in this example, we'll be creating this tank scene. We'll also cover the different nodes that compose the scene, as well as branching child nodes into their own scene. And we'll also cover the file system and some organization best practices for our project. Continuing from our previous project, we can start creating our tank scene by creating a new tab on our 2D screen. We'll go ahead and add a new root node. And for this, we're gonna use a character body 2D. This inherits from the physics body 2D, which is a type of collision object 2D. We can learn a little more by clicking on the docs for our character body 2D. The character body 2D uses movement and collision detection to better handle movement within our game. Now we'll go ahead and rename our character body 2D to tank. And because our character body inherits from a collision object, you'll notice we have a node warning for our configuration, stating that it has no shape. We can either add a collision shape 2D or a collision polygon 2D as a child that describes the shape of our tank. Now, because we haven't created any sprite assets for our tank yet, we can just create a placeholder collision shape. We'll use collision shape 2D, and under our collision shape 2D, the shape property, we'll put a rectangle shape 2D as the placeholder. Once we've imported and set our sprite texture, we can adjust its shape to better match our needs. Let's take a moment to organize our project just a bit further and save our current tank scene as well. This will help us to stay organized and is a good practice to do so early on in a project. At the root of our project, let's create a folder called Assets and another called Scenes. We'll also create a subfolder in Assets called Sprites, and this is where we will store Sprite Assets. Our scenes folder is where we'll save our current scene for the tank, as well as other scene resource types and their corresponding GD script resources. Let's go ahead and start by saving our tank. We'll make sure it's in our scenes folder, and we'll call this tank.tscn. We may later decide to create further layers of organization in our folder structure to better represent our project as it continues to grow. Next, you can either download the assets from our project's GitHub repository, or you can create your own tank body and tank weapon. You'll see here I've started an A sprite file that has both the tank body and tank weapon sprites with an animation for our tank body's movement. We've created the weapon sprite, which we may want to control separately in the future. Once you've downloaded or created your assets, drag them over into the asset sprite folder. And inside of our root node, in our tank scene, we'll go ahead and create a new sprite 2D. And for this, we'll rename it body sprite. We'll also create a weapon by first adding a node 2D. And then for that, we'll create a sprite 2D as well. We'll rename our node 2D weapon and our sprite 2D we'll rename to weapon sprite. With our body sprite selected, drag your tank body into the texture tab. We'll repeat this process for our weapon sprite. If you press F and zoom in, and get a better view of our tank sprites and the way they're laid out. If you downloaded our existing assets or created multiple frames of animation, you'll notice that by dragging our tank body sprite directly in to the texture property, that we have some weird behavior. In this case, we'll want to take our texture and set it as an animation with a certain number of H frames. In our case, we have two horizontal frames of animation. Also, because of our pivot offset, we'll want to take our weapon and center it 
on the pivot point. We can also redefine where the origin of object rotation is by clicking on this icon here, which changes the object's rotation pivot point. Select the location to pivot based off the sprite. You may have to eyeball this based off the asset you created. Note that because of our tank body's two frames of animation, that we'll also want to animate this using an animation player. Select our root node, add a new node, and search for animation player. Once we have an animation player selected, you can select the bottom dock's animation tab. We'll be creating two animations, an idle and a movement animation. To do this, select the animation button and click new. We'll call this first animation idle. Now for our animation, we'll select our body sprite. And you'll notice in the inspector tab, the key icon, which allows you to insert a keyframe into your animation's timeline. By selecting our zero frame, keyframe, we're prompted to create a new track property that's tracking the frame property of our body sprite. We also have the option to create a reset track. We'll go ahead and accept that. Now, as an idle animation, one frame is sufficient. But if we create a new animation for move, we'll want to start with a zero keyframe. We'll go ahead and create that with the rest track. But because our animation is going to only be two frames, we may not want one full second of animation. We can adjust the animation length by selecting this here and the animation steps by selecting this here. Point 0.2 should be sufficient for this. Now notice that our frame did not start at zero, so we want to make sure our head is back to zero on our timeline. We can just click and drag our frame over. For our second frame of animation, we'll have that start at point 0.1. Reselect our body sprite. We'll go ahead and increase our frame count to one and add the keyframe. At the end of the timeline, we'll go ahead and just set that back to zero and add a keyframe again. Also for looping, we'll go ahead and select this icon here that toggles between looping, ping pong, and no looping. When it's highlighted, you'll know that your looping is enabled. We can go ahead and test that play. We can see our tank's body is animated. Next, we'll be covering how we can extract a branch of our scene and move it into its own scene. Our weapon node is a great candidate for this, as we may have different behavior and children, such as our weapon sprite. First, go ahead and select your weapon node and right click and select Save Branch as Scene. And here we'll save it in the Scenes folder as weapon.tscn. You'll notice that it pulled the weapon sprite into the weapons node. We now have this new icon that when we click on it, it opens our weapon scene that contains the node 2D and the sprite 2D. We'll be able to do more with our weapon later on. For now, just understand that the process of extracting nodes into their own scenes is great for decoupling features when it makes sense and it prevents the scene from becoming too large in scope. Now, if we return to our tank scene, we have our tank sprites for the body and weapon. We'll now better understand what the collision shape we might want is. If we select our collision shape 2D, we can better size the rectangle shape to accommodate. Now based off our Z indexing, we don't see our collision shape, but we can click and drag that down below our body sprite to have a better view of what the rectangle is in comparison to our sprite. Let's go ahead and scale this up. Perfect. We'll handle collision logic later on, but for now, we'll just set up the sizing and ensure that it matches our sprites artwork. And this is a good start to learning the basics of creating and managing nodes in a scene for an object in our game, and how those nodes can be composed into a scene tree. We've also learned about setting properties in the inspector, and how we can keyframe those properties within an animation. If you've enjoyed this video, please leave a like, and feel free to subscribe for more content. Leave a comment below if there's anything you'd like us to cover in future videos.
And join us next time as we add some life into our tank by introducing GDScript and write some initial code to move our tank around in our world. Thanks for watching and happy coding.